there's ultimately no real single coherent ideology that binds together the people who call themselves libertarian. And you can see this uh, on one issue especially, and then we'll, we'll drill down into some more of their details. But of course, it's true that anytime you form a concept of an ideology and you recognize that there are uh, different people who adopt the same ideology, you allow for the fact that there's going to be variations in the theme. Uh, you can, in effect, omit measurements among the different variations and still recognize that there's a kind of thing these people all believe. But the kind of variations we're talking about here are way bigger than that. These are, these are differences of kind, not just differences in degree. And it starts out with some of the very examples we've already been talking about, Nikos. So you talked about the history of the connection between the libertarian movement and the left. And it's noteworthy and symbolic in this respect that uh, Zwilinski and Tomasi cite the very first person ever to call himself a libertarian, by, according to their research, was a fellow named uh, Joseph de Jacques, who was a French anarcho-communist. Of course, we also talked about Benjamin Tucker, whom I've seen uh, described as the first American to ever call himself a libertarian, again, another kind of socialist. A and just one issue in particular brings this out. And that's the issue of the relationship between freedom and anarchism. Murray Rothbard, who the book reminds us, uh, his nickname was Mr. Libertarian, uh, was a vocal and uh, intransigent anarchist. And Ayn Rand was a vocal and intransigent critic of Rothbard and of his anarchism. And the simple question to ask yourself is, how the heck do these fit together into a single ideology? They're both against something they call statism. And it's thought that Rand's view and Rothbard's view still have something in common because, well, they're, they're both anti-statist, aren't they? And that's part of the reason, by the way, why libertarians and anarchists will often call positions like Rand's minarchism. Minarchism is the idea that you should have a limited government. It's the idea that you should minimize the amount of state that you, that you have. Well, why would you put it in those terms if you didn't think, well, the state is a at best a necessary evil, and so you should just have as little of it as possible, and if it's not possible to have less, okay, then you're a minarchist. Otherwise, the ideal that eliminates all of the evil is anarchism. But Ayn Rand definitely did not think of herself as a minarchist, even though she advocated limited government. And that's because she was, put this simply, she was pro-government. She, she didn't think that it was a necessary evil. She thought it was a necessary good, necessary for the protection of individual rights. And she thought that anarchy was, was a horrific thing that was at odds with the value of individual rights. And so when you're thinking in terms of political philosophy, how are we going to categorize our political philosophies? Well, in a proper definition of any political philosophy, you, you define in terms of essentials and in terms of fundamentals. And if there isn't a fundamental difference in political philosophy between the idea that we should have a government and the idea that we should have no government, I don't know what would be a more fundamental difference. And so when you put Rand and Rothbard together under the same ideological heading, it's incoherent. They are fundamentally opposed to each other on the most fundamental question of political philosophy. And so the thing to then observe about the way the libertarian movement thinks about uh, the meaning of libertari libertarianism is that it's essentially grafted together. It's tried to graft together two fundamentally incompatible intellectual traditions. On the one hand, you have people like Rand and I think Mises and Bastiat and other liberals coming out of the 19th century, Nozick. probably cut to some extent, Robert Nozick, who believe in the importance of government, who think government exists to protect individual rights. And libertarians say there's nothing basically different between that tradition and, on the other hand, the anarchists, Rothbard, Molinari, Tucker, Rockwell, various communists and other anarchists. And what holds them together is, well, they all say that they're against certain kinds of state and they say that they're in favor of liberty. But that's at most a linguistic 
commonality that doesn't highlight anything of philosophical substance. 